false alarm. We're good? All right, good evening. Good to see you in person or online. Um, Sam is not here. And if you don't know, Sam and Kim are, have they made it to North Dakota? Okay, but they're en route to North Dakota uh, as uh, Hannah's moved up there to take a new teaching position. And so pray for them. They'll be on the road all this week, and they'll be up there and coming back sometime next week, and they'll be here for the grand reopening. So, so we don't have any music because... Um, Basically, my only music is to hit a YouTube video, and uh, we can't get up working. So, uh, so we're just going to move into kind of a prayer time, and uh, and just uh, just praise the Lord. Um, anybody just want to do praise the Lord for a great day, His goodness and His watch care. Uh, anybody have a praise you want to voice in the house, and then I can let the online group know. Anybody got a word of praise? I do pray. Do yes, it's not as hot as it was last week. Praise the Lord. Uh, do praise the Lord. Mom is doing uh, lots better, and maybe at church Sunday if all works out. So praise the Lord for that. Okay. Any other word of praise? Okay. Good. 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 Connection with the Lord. Amen. Amen. All righty. Any, uh, any other word of praise? Okay. Well, we just want to um, open up here with just a few moments of silence, uh, as we have been doing for quite a while, and just calm our hearts before God. And then... Basically, just uh, I'm going to take us through just time of prayer and confession, and and then we'll dive off into uh, to the lesson for the night. So let's just go, Lord, in prayer uh, for just uh, some silence. Lord, we come to you, and your word says, "Be still, and know that I am God." So, Lord, I ask that you would just speak to us in silence right now. Dear Heavenly Father, as we just come to you, Lord, we're grateful that you can even speak to us in a silence. And many times that's when you do speak. So Lord, we just come to you as needy people. Lord, we've all had stress and trials and tribulations and 
different things going on in our life. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, we just uh, put that at the cross. Lord, we are grateful that we can just come and talk with you. And Lord, I just pray you would speak in our hearts. Again, as we just think about the verse, 2 Chronicles, Lord, 7.14, if we humble ourselves, Lord, if we'll humble ourselves and be willing to seek your face, call on your name you hear our prayers Lord and so Lord I just pray as we preach that verse Sunday one of the verses in the text 1 Peter 5 7 says casting all your care upon the Lord because he cares about you and Lord we just cast everything in our lives upon you Lord. and Lord we're grateful that even though we may have a boatload it's nothing to you and as your word says there's nothing too difficult for you so Lord as we cast things upon you and as we think about our relationship with you Lord Lord, help us to take introspect, Lord. And so if you're going to see God work in your life, you've got to hunger for the Lord. And so how is your relationship with the Lord? Have you spent time with him this week? Do you hunger to want to know him more? Or have you gotten in a rut? Which is easy to do, Lord. So how's your thought life? Any forgiveness? Do you need to seek God's forgiveness in anything how about your speech how about your relationships with others or maybe someone in your family have you allowed something to cause you to become bitter Is the Lord ruling and reigning in your life? Or are you trying to take control? Lord, forgive us as we try to take control. And so, Lord, as we open up your word tonight, just reminded of Psalm 119, 105. It says, Your word is a lamp unto our feet, Lord. So, Lord, I pray tonight as we look at your word for a few minutes that it would be a lamp unto our feet and that it would be a light unto our path. Individually, as families, corporately, Lord, we just pray your word would illuminate and your Holy Spirit who's the author of the scriptures would illuminate and shine your light on it brightly. So Lord, we ask and we ask alone that you would just speak and you speak alone, Lord. And so we're just grateful that you've given us your word. Wow. Wow. We have your holy, inspired word, no errors, <laughs> it's sufficient. 
And Lord, may we never get comfortable with it. May we just have a hunger to grow in the grace and knowledge of you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I'm just amazed that there's so much in it and so much that we need to apply no matter how much we've been in your word. So, Lord, we just ask, please speak. May your word be a lamp and a light. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight we're in this series that we started Sunday, uh, preparing for the grand reopening. And tonight I want to talk to you about preparing by praying on the armor. Preparing by praying on the armor. There is an outline, one in the back. If you're online with us, uh, there's one there just below that you can uh, click and, uh, and follow along with us. And so I just want to open up with some introductory thoughts as tonight we want to look at preparing by praying on the armor. We want to look at preparing by praying on the armor. And I just want to just have a couple of statements to kind of get our minds going in this direction, and then we're going to dive off into the text. But number one, don't forget that the Bible is the best prayer manual to use. You want a, a prayer manual, there's no better prayer manual than the Word of God. Okay? Uh, some of what I just prayed in that prayer uh, was what my words. Uh, it was just the Word of God. Uh, that last verse that I just prayed, Psalm 119, 105, that, that's just God's Word. And sometimes we can forget, or sometimes you ever think, God, just I'm not that great at it. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think any of us are great at it. We're all a work in progress. We're all under construction when it comes to prayer. But if you want to know the best prayer manual, uh, you have the Word of God open when you pray. Because many times, um, if, you get some, if you get my prayer update, many times I try to, not all prayer requests, but many times I try to put a verse with that. And you got requests too in your own life. And sometimes the best thing to do is say, God, I just need a, what's a verse I can, <laughs> that wouldn't be taken out of context, <laughs> that I could pray uh, for this request. And so don't forget, man, this is the best prayer, man. Number two, life is war, and our enemy is not flesh and blood. Life is war. <laughs> it's war. The minute you give your life to Christ, <laughs> it becomes a war. And our enemy is not um, flesh and blood. Now, when you play sports, I mean, you're especially team sports, you're playing on another team, and there's boundaries, there's rules, uh, there's the, the other team is the enemy, and, you, you know, you're, you're fighting pretty much in flesh and, and blood. Um, but when it comes to a spiritual battle, our battle is against the evil one. And was the last part of the model prayer Matthew 6 and delivers from the evil one why because we're in a battle and we're in a battle for the war for our soul every day and as we preached Sunday I mean uh, the spiritual warfare aspect of it is if you don't pay close attention to your walk you'll become the devil's next meal because he is roaring, or, you know, he's prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking, looking for whom he may devour, and he's looking for any Christian that he can devour. He said, well, what about lost people? Well, yeah, he's, gonna, he's already got them in the camp, and uh, he's doing all he can to keep them over there and hopefully destroy their lives as fast as possible. And so let me give you the aim of this message. What we want to talk about tonight is this. God gave us an armor that we can pray and put on for protection. God gave us an armor that we can pray 
and put on for protection. Now, we've been in this text before, and tonight we want to look at this text. And, I mean, you can preach this text for a long time. But uh, I just want to go back to this armor. And tonight what I want to do is basically every part of the armor corresponds with an attribute of Jesus. And I just want to do that tonight um, and as we look at this text. So let's read Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, this is at the end of the, uh, Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. First three uh, chapters has all been about doctrine, and the last uh, three is all about how to live it out, and there's 40 commands there. Verse 10, he says, Finally, be strengthened, another command, by what? By the Lord and by his vast strength. Here's another command here, what? Put on the, f I like the way he said, the full armor. So there's no, uh, well, can I just wear part of the armor? No, he says, put on the full armor of God so that you can what? So that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, again, he says what? Take up the full armor of God. So that what? You may be able to resist in the evil day having prepared. Hey, you've got to be prepared. Having prepared everything to do what? To take your stand. Then he says what? Stand, therefore, with what? Truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like an armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with what? The readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish, don't miss this, all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, in verse 18, pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request and stay alert. And he, Peter said this Sunday, stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. And so, again, what I want to do tonight is just look at each one of these uh, pieces of the gospel armor. Paul's already said to do what? Take it up and put it on. Okay, take it up and put it on. And God gave us this armor so that we can pray and have protection each and every day. And so let me, let's just go through these. Like I said, I mean, you could, you can preach a whole sermon on each one of these and we're not going to do that tonight. I just want to kind of run through these and just remind you of the armor, okay, um, and what you need to have. Number one. You need to put on what? The belt of truth. And Jesus is what? <laughs> the truth. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto God the Father except through me. Jesus is the truth. We just read today in our reading in John 8. Jesus says, and what? And you shall know the truth. <laughs> Praise God, and the truth shall set you free. And so we need to have the belt of truth. We need to, to put on uh, the Word of God. The Word of God needs to uh, uh, put together, hold together everything in our life. And so we need to be teachable. We need to be committed to God's Word. If you're not teachable and committed to God's Word, you're not going to live by His truth. And if you don't live by His truth, you're definitely not going to pray and put on the armor of God. But God wants us to live by his truth, but one of the great ways to be reminded of that is, Lord, hey, help me to put on the belt of truth. Uh, verse I use here, Joshua 1.8, this book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do all things according that are written in it, for then you will make your ways prosperous and have good success. And this, this, this word, is to be what my life is about. And I need to uh, 
be connected with the word every day and i need to pray for that word and that i would be teachable to that word and i would live by his word second piece you got the breastplate of righteousness breastplate of righteousness pretty simple jesus is our righteousness second corinthians 5 21 says for he who knew no sin praise god became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It's not our righteousness, it's his righteousness. And we need to pray on that breastplate of righteousness. Why? So that we might be led by his righteousness, his word, so that we might then live, what, a clean and obedient life. That we might strive to stay close and clean that we might ask him to to reign um, in our lives that we might ask him to reign in what we see that's why job 31 1 i try to pray this out, lord i made a covenant with my eyes why then should i look lustfully upon a young woman See, Jesus wants us to live a righteous life. And for that to happen, you've got to be willing to put on the armor and allow God to remove the hindrances so that you might walk a right life. What hinders us from walking a right life? <laughs> Idols, flesh, self. That's why Paul said, I've been, what, crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. And so it's about putting on this breastplate of righteousness. Number three, you've got to put on the gospel sandals of peace. You've got to put on the gospel sandals of peace. And the correlation is what? Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Ephesians 2.14 in this same letter says Jesus is, he himself is our peace. Praise God as Christ's followers. And so he reminds us, the Prince of Peace reminds us every day to, to lace up the gospel <laughs> uh, sandals or he tells us, hey, why don't you Velcro on the gospel of peace? So that you'll be open to let others know about the Prince of Peace. Romans 5.1 says it like this. Therefore, since we've been justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. See, once we have peace with God, then we can lace up or Velcro those uh, gospel sandals on. And then if you read Philippians 4, we also have the peace of God and can have the peace of God when we give it to all to him and we put on the armor of God, that we can have the peace of God to live for him in this world and point others to Christ. And so we've got to be willing um, to put on these gospel shoes. Number four, the shield of faith. He says, what, take up that shield of faith so that you might be able to extinguish the fiery darts. Okay? Now, Jesus is our shield. Okay? Now, if you study that, if you remember, if we've studied the armor, uh, many times in warfare back then, they would shoot those arrows of, uh, had pitch and fire, and many times they would hold up these big shields, and they would be doused in water. And so when that arrow hit it, it just extinguished it. For you and I, we need to have a shield of faith. Jesus needs to be our shield. Psalm 18, verse 2 says this. It says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, where I seek refuge. And then he says, He's my what? He's my shield and the horn 
of my salvation. He is my stronghold. He says, my shield. Now, you've got all these my's there, but there he says, he is my shield. And it's a shield of what? Faith. Where you trust God that he can extinguish and can take care of anything that comes your way. Now, again, to go back to all this stuff, anything that comes to you has to come through God even it is, if it is from the evil one, you need to understand Satan is his delivery boy. And many times he allow it so you might draw closer to him for his purposes and his will in your life. But it says it's a shield of what? Faith. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith. And not by sight. That's why we need this piece on. Because many times we, it's everybody included, <laughs> can li it's a whole lot easier to live by sight. You know what I'm saying? Let's just go back to the, the gospel one. It's like, it's like, Lord, there ain't no way that person's going to give their life to Christ. I've talked to them, they're my family, or they're my friend, or whoever they are. They're never going to give their life to Christ. And by sight, they're not going to the way you think. But by faith, believing, yeah, God, you can, you can save them. They're still alive. They still have their mind. There's still people sharing the gospel with, and I'm going to pray that they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. See, we walk by faith and not by sight. Most of the time, we want to walk by sight. Why? It's just, it's easier. Faith means I have to put on this armor, and i got to trust God, and trust God knows what's best for me around the corner. And he does, praise God, knows what's best for us around the corner. It's just sometimes we forget it. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why we need to put on this shield of faith. Number five, put on the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Why? Because Jesus is our salvation. He's the one that saves us. You might want to put on your helmet every day. Acts 4.12 says this, There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to people by which we must be saved. Jesus' name actually means God is my salvation. He's our Savior. We've got to have that helmet of salvation on. But you also need to put on that helmet so he's guarding our thought life every day. That's why... I've we looked at that text in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, where it talks about how we have weapons to fight these strongholds and these battles. And, and one of them is, is verse 5 says, taking every thought captive to what? The obedience of Christ. So we got to take it captive to his word and to Christ. And so that's why we need to have the helmet on. If you don't have a helmet on, you're going to get hurt riding on a motorcycle. If you don't have a helmet on and you go play football, you're going to get hurt if they're playing in full pads. Spiritually, no helmet, no armor. Um, you're fresh pickings for the, the devil because he's got a few arrows that he's going to shoot. And if he can take a headshot, he'll take a headshot and try to knock you out. He can't take your life. But if he can get you discouraged, distressed, disabled, out of the word, out of church, out of the will of God, he's going to do it. That's what he did. Shoot. He's done that with a lot of people in this last year and a half. Because no armor, you're free game. 
Number six, you need the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. And the attribute here is Jesus is the living word. Because it says in the text, what? Sword of the Spirit, which is what? The word of God. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So who's that word? Go down to verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the one and only of God the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the living word. But we need the Word of God. That's why you need to read and engage with the Word of God on a daily basis. It needs to be a natural activity in your life. You say, well, what if I miss a day? God forgives you. What if I miss three days? Again, God's still going to forgive you. You know what God says? Let's go. Let's get back together. Let's hang out. Why? Because he loves you. He wants to speak to you. He wants to help you. He wants to protect you. He wants you to understand, hey, this is warfare. And you better get buckled up. Um, and we might want to get buckled up um, even more with the days coming ahead. And so he says, man, you've got the word of God. This is a sword, right? And he says, learn how to wield this sword. Use it in your life. Use it in prayer. But you've got to understand, you've got a sword. And you only come to know that as you read and engage with the word and spend time with him in the word. And the great thing is, no matter how much time you spend with him, no matter what, if you'll spend time with him and look into his word, God will speak to you. And then if you'll use his word and put on the armor, God will speak to you and use you through prayer too. So let's move to the seventh piece. And I think this is the piece of the armor. I mean, some people may disagree, uh, but I do think it is. Verse 18, he says, all right. Pray at all times in the Spirit. So we're to put on each piece of the gospel by praying it on so that we may be clothed in Christ. And this word here, pray, is in the present tense. It means, hey, we're to pray continually. It's every day at all times as God gives us the opportunity. We're to pray. We're to put on this gospel armor. We're to stay alert. And as we pray and put it on, we're praying so that we might be clothed in Christ. So that we might live for Christ. Say, so why do you pray on the armor? Well, number one, I already know it's, it's warfare. Number two, I want to try to please Christ. Number three, I want to try to stay close and clean to him. Now, you say, hey, what if I pray and put on the armor? I start doing it every day. Does that mean I'll never be confronted and never have sin? No, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> you might have more confrontation on a daily basis, to be honest with you. But you are prepared because you know what's coming up. If I would say today a smart policeman or woman in Atlanta or New York City or Chicago or L.A., or one of those other big metropolitan cities, even though it's hot in the summer, if I had to be a beat out on the street somewhere, I think I would be, wa be wearing a bulletproof vest. Because they don't know what they're going to face. They don't know what attacks they're going to face from criminal criminals and enemies out there today. Same goes for you and I. You and I need to pray and put on the armor of God. Why? Because the devil's coming for you. And he's not going to come at a time you expect. Most of the time he's going to come at the worst time possible. 
And so we need the power of God in our lives. How's that accessed? By praying on the armory. See, God gave us an armor that we can pray on and put on for protection. You say, how do you pray it on? It's, it's just simple. The manual's right there. Even if you don't put a verse in, Lord, help me to put on the belt of truth today. Lord, I want to live by your truth. Help me to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Lord, help me to, to live according to your righteous standard. Help me be shod with the gospel of peace, Lord. Help me about promoting your peace and pointing people to you. Lord, help me to walk by faith. Put that shield of faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. Lord, help me put on the helmet of salvation. Lord, Lord, I thank you that you saved me. Praise God. But Lord, help me to take those thoughts captive to you today. Lord, help me to use what? Your word, your sword. Help me to live by your word. Walk by your word. And then pray. Lord, help me to pray in the spirit. Guide me. And you just pray and put it on. You're like, can I add more to that? Yeah, it's, it's your prayer life, okay? But if you don't put on any gospel armor, you're not covered. Because, and, and let me just say this, just because you prayed it one yesterday doesn't mean it's good for today. Just like yesterday's filling of the Holy Spirit is no good today. Because it says, one chapter over, it says, be filled, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's present tense, which means every day continuously. So yesterday's not going to be just like yesterday's manna, huh, wasn't even good for the next day. And so you and I have to pray and put on this armor. So I just encourage you with this. We all have war. Life is war. But our enemy is not flesh and blood. It is the, it's the devil. And we just need to be reminded of that. So pray and put on the armor. If you have any problems with that, just ask. we got people around here to help you. I'll help you. But I just say just, just go down right through the passage there and pray it on. Simple as that. And before long, God will give you some neat verses to put with them. And he'll give you a lot more creativity than I got. And then you teach someone how to do it. It's simple as that. So let me give you some prayer requests. We're going to break up and pray here in groups and online. Um, you, you pray for these and whatever else is on your heart. Once you get in the group, if there is an urgent request, uh, please let that group know because we do want to pray for those. Uh, but let me just run through these requests. I'm just going to run through them really, really fast. Number one, pray for righteousness to be exalted in our cities and country instead of lawlessness. That's the problem. That's one of the main problems. <laughs> righteousness is not being exalted. Lawlessness is. Number two, pray for the protection of our children and students from the evil one. Gosh, I could preach again here. I get sick and tired of stuff I keep seeing. Saw a video of, uh, gosh, can't even remember. It's a big children's thing. Oh, gosh. Just went out my name. Clue, I can't even remember the name of it. But basically, it's a transvestite guy showing a parade go by and say, here's a family with two mommies, here's a family with two daddies, and a, here's a family of non-gender people. And it's a cartoon for two years old. And when I remember it, I'll let you know. It just went out my mind. Another one out for kids, little tubbies, same thing as promoting transgender junk. If, they, if you don't think the evil one is after our kids and our grandkids, whoo, you're sadly mistaken, folks. I think time is, I could be wrong, is getting short. 
Jesus. Again, Jesus always is a day closer, and whether we're, we're months away from him coming, years or whatever, we're always closer, but I do think the evil one is really, he, he's got his foot down on the gas hard, and we need to pray. And again, I thank church and all of you here tonight and online that do pray for our kids and our students. Thank you so much. Number three, pray for teachers, students, principals, and administrators as they start back to school. City schools start back tomorrow. County schools start back Tuesday, I believe. So let's pray for them. Next week, uh, just go ahead and start praying for this. And you online, if you've never been to one of these, come, because I've never led one of these, so it's going to be pretty neat. So... Uh, but we're going to have a prayer night of prayer walking. I've done something similar to this, but um, I've not led one like this fully throughout the whole church. So come next week. It's, I think it's going to be a great time. Uh, you can get some exercise, a little bit of exercise, and we're going to pray. Uh, it's like, do I have to pray out loud? No. You don't. But we want to prepare for the grand reopening, so we're going to pray over the whole campus. Pray God be glorified and the devil be kicked out of here. <laughs> That's what we're praying for. So, uh, so come join us. Uh, and, and with that, pray for our grand reopening and back to church bash. That'll be the 15th, just around the corner. The number six, uh, pray for God to move at Beth Seda and we'll see lives changed and people growing in their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's what we want to see all the time, people, lives changed. And number seven, Pray for revival in our churches. Man, our Southern Baptist Convention desperately needs uh, revival. And pray for, you say, what's the problem? There, there's, there needs to be a spiritual awakening all over our country. Say, so what is that? Where people are awakened to their sinfulness and to the need of a Savior. That's spiritual awakening. When people start realizing and start asking, man, what's this Jesus about? And people all over start getting saved. That's a spiritual awakening. But most of the time it starts with the house of God and is birthed out of prayer and revival. So that's why we pray for these things. Okay? So you online, um, don't miss Sunday. If you're online, go ahead and get your juice and crackers because we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. If you're in person, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Um, and it'll be okay. You won't be passing bread or juice to people. Uh, we'll have it on tables, and you'll come down and pick your individual cup and go back to your seat so you won't touch anybody else's stuff. So uh, we're going to have it as um, socially distanced, and what I can't remember the word, kind of like Chick-fil-A where as few as hands as possible are touching the food and the stuff. So, so uh, but we'll be doing that um, Sunday, and I think that's going to be a neat time as we just celebrate. Lord's Supper is always a neat time as we celebrate as a church. Okay? So I hope you all have a great uh, time of prayer online, and uh, see you all Sunday. And so let's get the praying in the house, too. So you should be able to break up into...